guys, it's Jane, and for today's video, we are going to be talking about Prince Yeonsan. Now, I'm just gonna jump right into the basic facts. So first of all, his personal name was Yi Yung. So as I explained before, usually kings had a one-syllable name when they were born, and in his case, it was Yung. Prince Yeonsan is actually the 10th monarch of Joseon, but since he is remembered as a very bad tyrant, instead of being like a wang, he's remembered as Prince Yeonsan because he's not remembered as a great ruler, so his kind of rank was demoted and he doesn't have a temple name as other kings do. And he reigned from the 20th of January in 1495 to the 18th of September in 1506. So he was actually born in 1476 and he died only aged 29 on the 20th of November 1506. So as we know, like a long time ago in this channel, we've talked about Kwang Hyegun. So Kwang Hyegun was another tyrant of Joseon, but Yeon Sanggun is probably remembered as like an even worse tyrant. And I'll be explaining the reasons down below. So yeah, let's start at the very beginning of his life. So Yeon Sun was actually the son of a concubine, similar to Kwang Hye, who as I explained before, was another tyrant. If you want to learn more about him before you watch this video, then you know you can go search through my other videos. So basically what happened was Yeonsan's dad, the king, had no heir. So he was urged to take another wife in order to produce a son and secure the royal succession, right? And then so Lady Yoon was chosen for her beauty and her intellect and eventually they were married, but then she gave birth to Yeonsan. But this, Yeonsan's mother was kind of problematic because she had a lot of jealousy issues is how I'm going to phrase it. And long story short, she was killed and she was exiled. But the funny thing here is that Yeonsan didn't actually know about this. He grew up thinking that he was the son of the queen and not the son of the concubine. And this is kind of where the trouble starts. So basically, since he didn't know actually that his mother was the one who had been exiled and had been killed, when he found out about the death of his birth mother, he was angry at the queen dowager, at his father, at the other concubines. And what he did was he attempted to like restore her name and restore her titles and stuff even after her death. And this actually went against a lot of government officials. And then this kind of led him to try to get rid of those officials. And he even even like sentenced a lot of them to death and he killed a lot of the concubines who were in support of the execution of his mother. So a lot of people do think that this incident had a lot to do with him becoming a tyrant and I do agree because you know this is kind of where he started showing some problematic parts of himself. And then some things to be remembered why I, I'm not like talking very well today, I'm sorry. But some of the things he did to be remembered as a tyrant, the first one is probably the suppression of free learning and speech. So as you know, I think- So where was I? So my brother came in and then he like knocked down my camera. Anyways, the first thing he did, probably one of the major things, the reasons behind why he's still remembered as a tyrant is because he suppressed free learning and free speech. So as you know, I talked about this before in my previous videos, there existed Songgyungwan in Joseon. Songgyungwan University, Songgyungwan 대학교 아직까지도 있잖아요. It exists in Korea, it's the oldest university in Korea. And it's a temple of learning, it's a place of learning. And he actually closed it down and converted it into his personal kind of pleasure playground and thousands of young girls were gathered there of all ages all backgrounds to kind of please the king like courtesans and he also demolished like residential areas to like make space for like you know his like sexual pleasures and like his entertainers and things and he evicted like 20,000 residents just to do that and then he forced people to like help build these places so obviously that's not very kingly behavior that's very morally wrong you shouldn't force labor on your subjects and you also shouldn't force young girls to be your sex slaves so that is probably one of the biggest if not the biggest reason he's remembered as a tyrant and second it kind of does go along with the second part of the first reason but he seized hundreds of women to serve as entertainers and like basically slaves so kind of giving you detail on this is Che Hong Sa 
and Chet Chongsa. So these people were dispatched throughout the country to kind of retrieve beautiful women. It didn't matter. As you know, there were class systems in Joseon, but it didn't matter whether they were the nobility or whether they were of the lowest class. He said, get me anybody, everybody who you think I would like. And in a minute, they just became Yeonsans, basically. Yeah, that's actually very sad if you think about it. That was what Yeonsan did. He kind of demolished learning. He tried to get rid of Buddhism, I'm pretty sure. And then he kind of turned the palace, turned Songyungwan into his personal playground, which is probably why he was dethroned and he's still remembered as a tyrant today. Those were only a few of the things that he did, and I hope this video served as a sort of introduction for who Yeonsan-gun was. And if you are interested in this pretty, you know, horrible guy, then you could go search him up. And of course, since he is such a famous tyrant, there are a lot of books, a lot of movies, a lot of media about him. Although I'm not sure all of them are 100% accurate. I think it would be interesting if you are interested in this particular guy to go watch some of those. So I hope today's video was entertaining and see you next time. Bye.